So finding the quotient T I E N T quotient of powers means that you are finding the result of dividing numbers which have powers associated with them. So for exa example, maybe you have uh, a to the third, b to the fourth, c squared, and you're dividing that by a, b squared, c. Yeah. So we're taking the quotient of, the division of, numbers which are raised to some power. Now the trick to this is, again, as usual, to recognize what the power represents and how that interacts with the numbers underneath. If I were to write this out sort of longhand uh, without using the powers, I'd have a times a times a times b times b times b times b times c times c on top. And I'd have a times b times b times c on the bottom. Now we're looking at it, it looks a little more like we're used to. We could see that there are a number of things we could cancel here. If we have a divided by a, that's 1. So 1 times all this stuff up here is not going to change it. And 1 times all this stuff down here is not going to change it. So really, we can just get rid of that first a there. And then we have 4 b's up here and 2 b's here. So we could cancel two of those b's on the top with the two on the bottom. And we could cancel one of the c's on the top and on the bottom. So then all we're left with is a times a times b times b times c on top. And there's nothing left on the bottom, just, just a 1, which doesn't mean anything to us. And if we were to write that back in shorthand again, we'd end up with a squared times b squared times c. Now, that's the longhand way of working it out. The shorthand way is just compare what we have to what we started with here a to the second power, well, that would be the same as 3 times, or 3 minus 1. Because anything to the first power, we don't bother writing the power, so that would be, that this here is a to the first. If we were to subtract 3 minus 1, we'd get 2. If we were to subtract 4 minus 2, we'd get 2 again, which was our power for b. And if we were to subtract 2 minus 1, we get 1, which was the power we had for c. So when you're dividing powers, when you're dividing numbers that are raised to exponents, as long as the number itself is the same, you just subtract the exponents. Because what you're really doing is sort of removing matching pairs like we did here. Every time you subtract top and bottom, you're removing one of those matching pairs and just leaving what's left. So let's take a look at a specific example sent in by a student. Um, Oliver said, help, I can't seem to get this one right. <laughs> so obviously he'd worked on it a couple of times. Let's take a look at what he's come up with here and see if we can help out. So he started off with 6 squared, x to the 7th, y to the 3rd, over 3 squared, x to the 9th to the 3rd, y squared. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, sort of straighten this out on the bottom here. Remember, if we have a power raised to a power, we multiply. So we're going to have... 6 squared, that's 36, x to the 7th, y cubed, over 3 squared, that's 9, and then our raised to the power thing we were just talking about, so 9 times 3 is 27, x to the 27th, y squared. Now I could write all these out, I could x times x times x times x 7 times, and y 3 more times, but all I'm going to do here is sort of mentally cancel out the ones that match. 36 divided by 9, that reduces to 4. So I'll have 4 on top. And then if I have 7x's on top and 27x's on the bottom, then 7 of those are going to cancel on top, and the top ones are going to be gone. But I'm still going to have 20 of them on the bottom. So x to the 20th. And then 3 minus 2, if I have 3 on top and 2 on the bottom, I'm going to be left with just one more on top. And we're going to get rid of all the ones on the bottom. So I end up with 4y over x to the 20th. And that's the reduced form of your initial expression there, Oliver.